Hello and welcome back, I'm Mondef, and today I would like to answer a question B00 posed in his latest Feed the Beast Mindcrack episode, which is how many steam boilers does it take to run a mass fab at full speed, right? Because they're using steam power. Uh, I'm getting power from biofuel, I made a way too big tank, I haven't even been able to fill it while I've been setting up and testing all these different setups here. Um, but it's plenty of biofuel which is running a steam boiler. It's not fully heated up, but that doesn't impact our test since it's full of steam. I've got it hooked up to two turbines, two steam turbines, which are connect to, connected up to MFSUs. Now, steam turbines are a bit intelligent. They will pick an MFSU to charge. So I have four on here, but it'll only pick one. In this case, I think it's the top right. Here it is. This is the one that's charging. It's also depleting. Uh, I think it's also the top right. Nope. That's one of these. There it is. There's the one that's charging. So it picks one and it charges it. It doesn't move around. It just picks one and goes with it um, to sit and charge. And you can see that the mass fab is not running at full speed. It is blinking. Uh, so this is not enough, right? Okay, so let's move over here. I got some signs here, some notes. Um, we're going to do a little bit of math today to try to answer this question. One boiler, this is one boiler, it can run two and a quarter turbines. I have that one hooked up to two, so it could actually run another quarter of a turbine. Right? Each turbine outputs 100 EU per tick, which means that one boiler could potentially output 225 EU per tick. Right? Now, one of these MFSUs, I've got four hooked up, but of course, we've, as we talked about, only one of, on each one of those is being used. One MFSU outputs 512 EU per tick. So that means that in order to run one MFSU at full speed, uh, you would actually need two entire steam boilers running three, or running, sorry, five turbines. Actually running five and a little bit extra. Call it six. <laughs> it's really five and a bit. Right, so it would take five of those to run one MFSU to run one MFSU at full speed. So hooking the MFSUs up on separate, that doesn't actually help, doesn't do anything. So it takes about two boilers to keep one MFSU charged. Um, I'm saying charged here because it, if you had two running at 225, that would give you, you know, more than you could deplete out of it. So that would keep it charged. Um, I wanted to note here that the steam boiler is really difficult to use and once we push all the power into MFSU that really becomes our power source and so for the rest of these I'll be using ultimate hybrid solar panels and I'm using these because they generate and output 512 EU a tick so basically they act like a charged MFSU uh, so I will be using this for the rest of the demonstrations uh, basically each one of these you can imagine is two steam boilers running at full speed. Right, so on this one I've got four of these. And you can see my matter fabricator. It's running pretty well. You know, keep it stocked up. It's made generated for UU matter while I've you know set up the rest of the tests here. Uh, and that's pretty good. Uh, but keep in mind that's one, two, three, four of these solar panels, which would be equivalent to eight steam boilers running at full speed. Alright, so matter fab can take 8,192 EU packets. We'll come back to the packet thing. This is not EU per tick. It even says it on the tooltip. Max EU per packet in is 8,192. It's not the same as a tick. Right? MFSUs and even advanced solar super crazy panels, though like those ones, these output 512 EU per tick, which means that you would need 16 to generate 8,192 EU per tick, which is what this setup. This is 16 advanced crazy ridiculous solar panels running into a mass fabricator. And you can see the light's now solid on, which is good, and generates quite a bit more. You can see by the amount of UU in there, it's generated 17 UU matter, much more than our one over there, which had four. Let's keep the sun on here. Um, so this is better. This is quite a bit better. This is 16 MFS, charged MFSUs, or um, you know, 16 of these advanced ridiculous solar panels, right? But, but wait, wait, wait. 
it can take up to 8,192 EU packets, not just EU per tick. This is 8,192 EU per tick, but it can take 8,192 EU packets. So, so not just per tick. It can actually take many times more than that per tick, right? Uh, and uh, it's interesting to note here, the packet is one piece of information. So this is generating 512 EU per tick, packages that up, and then it sends that package to the mass matter fabricator. So this is every tick, that's a magnitude of time, creates a packet, that's a collection of EU, and that packet would contain 512 EU, and that's what it sends. So this is getting a whole bunch, in fact, 16, packets of 512 EU per tick. Alright, so that's what that's doing. So it can take many more times that in EU per tick because it can take many more packets than just 16 packets. Right, um, so here's, a, oh, I, I mentioned here uh, the AESU can output much higher EU per tick. This is a larger packet, 2048. It's four times the size of a packet, which means if we were using those instead of MFSUs or instead of, you know, the advanced crazy solar panels, it would only take four. This is that setup for AESUs set to max EU, uh, EU per tick out. These packets, it creates 2048 EU packets. Now those packets are too large for traditional fiber cable, so you have to use these. These are the four times insulated HV cable, right? Um, and these four pipe into here. This is actually this exact same amount of power as the previous setup, uh, but it is um, running through AESUs instead of running directly in from the, the power source. All right, so it can take much more power than this. This is a setup that is, oh, not exactly double. Um, this has changed the shape a little bit. This is a shape we used on the, the first setup here. This is called a solar flower. Um, and each one of these is set to the same configuration we had before. And you can see these are still pegged at zero. Uh, that's the point here. And you can see this one won't peg at zero since it can't output more than it takes in. So you'll just see that its EU value is, is static. Uh, none of these are gaining any EU into the storage unit. The, this is eating all of it. So, but you can see it generated much more UU matter than the other setups have. And these are getting progressively newer as well, and they gener have generated more UU matter. So, as we talk about packets, even these only output a 2048 EU packet. Now, besides nuclear and fusion reactors, um, this is the other way to generate a packet that large. This is a lightning rod. Uh, lightning rods can get plopped down next to... You wouldn't want to connect it to that. <laughs> <laughs> get plopped down next to your uh, matter fabricator. So you could theoretically run a matter fabricator with you know, four lightning rods set up like this, and then you run your, uh, these are iron fences, which act as the lightning rod uh, up into the sky. And when they get struck by lightning, you get a whole bunch of UU matter, assuming that you have scrap in the machine. So you could, oh, come on. If I can place them, yeah. The higher you go, the more likely it is to get struck by lightning. So you could run a matter fabricator like this. Um, and then you could actually, from the bottom, you know, pipe, the, run the wire out to there and then come up manually and uh, put your scrap in it and all that stuff. So, um, But it's incredibly uncontrollable. You don't never know when the lightning is going to strike. Of course, on the Mindcrack server, this might be a viable solution since um, it's always rains, right? Okay, anyway. All right, so lots of math. Basically, uh, the mass fab will eat all oh, mass and matter fabricator, right? Yeah, matter fab, the matter fabricator, my fault. The matter fabricator will eat all of your EU and it burps out some UU matter. Um, how, but that doesn't answer our question. How many steam boilers does it take to run a matter fabricator at full speed? Um, answers in the back. Well, if you trust the wiki, which I don't, the wiki says that its packet allotment, again, that's 8,192, can only be handled per side of the cube, which uh, I obviously don't trust that since that one right there is taking double, this one here is taking double that per side of the, one side of the cube. 
So I don't trust that, but if you do, then it would take 492 boilers. Uh, if you trust me, which I don't trust me either, because I have not tested this, uh, much, much more than that. <laughs> more than more than 500 boilers. All right, realistically, uh, more than anyone really wants to test. So if we've got, you know, if, it'll, if it's basically going to eat all of your EU, how do you run a mace reader? <laughs> right? Or, you know, automated systems. I mean, that's the real question, but um, you run them like this. Uh, you have your power array, whatever it is, steam boilers, uh, ultimate hybrid solar panels, whatever. You want your your power array to always be empty. So these have storage, which is useful for some things, but if you're doing matter fabrication, you want these to be empty all the time, right? Why would you want this to get full? If it got full, that would just mean that you're wasting EU you could potentially be using to create UU matter. So you want these to always be empty, but you want a storage of power to be used for uh, your matter fabricator. Um, so you store some of it. Um, so you come over here and you have this MFSU, and I have a fully charged MFSU. And this is outporting, I'm just, you know, uh, medium voltage transformer, low voltage transformer, running a mace rater with it, right? And this is what you use to do, you know, all your mace rating goodness. Um, whatever you're gonna do with, with your power on that side. Also connected directly to your power source, you hook up your matter fabricator. Now any leftover power is going to go here. The MFSU is going to stay charged because it will order ticks and it will get it'll order packets, I apologize. It'll order packets from the power source and it'll, packets will be delivered. You can see it's going to keep itself charged even after the macerator has macerated my uh, sandstone. Uh, and the matter fabricator then will eat up all of the rest of your power, so you're no longer wasting power by having a matter fabricator, and that's the whole point. Of course, the more power you have, the more UU matter, the more emeralds, but, um, you know, that's a long-term project. You're always going to be adding power sources uh, if you want your matter fabricator to run quickly. Um, it's basically set up such that you only ever need one of these blocks, one matter fabricator. Uh, you just have to make sure you can feed it with enough scrap, you suck out the UU matter so you don't choke it, and you always have some sort of power to it. Even if even if all you do is you stick, you know, one solar panel on top of this thing, it'll generate UU. It just will take a long time. Um, so whatever you can give it, give it to it. Anything else, store. Store enough so that you have your machine, you can run your machines without having to worry about it, and eat the rest into your matter fabricator. Anyway, I hope this guys help I hope this helps you guys. I'm Mondef, and I'll see you next time.